Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing good. I am Roshni from LearnerHub, the free learning platform where you get to learn physics, chemistry, maths, biology, everything for free at learnerhub.com. So I am here today with a video on coal and petroleum class 8 science. And in this video, we are going to learn about what exactly are natural resources. Not just that, we will also talk about what are exhaustible and inexhaustible resources and most importantly, we will spend good amount of time in understanding what are fossil fuels. Now you must be wondering, what are these? What is exhaustible, inexhaustible fossil fuels? Do not worry, you will get to know about all of these in the next few minutes. So are you all ready? Let's get started. So what are natural resources? The name says natural resources, the resources which exist in nature. So these are those substances that exist in nature and they are useful to mankind. So for these substances, we cannot create them artificially. So even if we want to create them, we can't and they tend to exist, they tend to form in nature by themselves and they are extremely useful to mankind in many different ways. Most of them act as wonderful sources of energy. So some of the examples of natural resources are soil and we all know how important soil is. The growth and development of plants, they are all directly dependent on soil. Soil is rich in minerals. So there is an entire ecosystem which exists within the soil. There are so many different types of living organisms living inside the soil. So soil is one such natural resource. Air. We live because we are able to breathe in. And what do we breathe? We breathe air. So air which is present around us is something which is extremely important for the survival of all types of living organisms. And do you think that we can create air? No, air is something which exists naturally. Water is another such natural resource. Forests, wildlife. So these are all examples of natural resources. Some other examples of natural resources, coal, petroleum. So these are also natural resources because we cannot create coal. We cannot create petroleum. So in this lesson, our agenda is to talk in more detail about these two natural resources that is coal and petroleum. So we will see that how they are beneficial to us, how do they help us. Now just to tell you in brief, so you would have often seen that coal is being used to, when you burn coal you get a lot of fire, you get a lot of heat and that heat energy is utilized for many different purposes. For example, it is used for cooking purpose. Coal is also used for generation of electricity. So the heat energy of the coal is transformed into electric energy. So that's how the energy is utilized. Petro petroleum, uh, there are so many products which are obtained from petroleum like petrol, diesel, kerosene and all of them are useful to mankind. So these types of resources are called natural resources. Now the question is, why do we talk about managing resources? Why do you would have often seen people saying that we should uh, take care, good care of the natural resources. We should try to not waste them. We should try to preserve them. So why do we talk about resource management? Because the resources are limited. Now, even if not all resources, but those resources which take a long time to be formed, they are, we can say that they are limited. Now, if you take examples of resources like air, water, um, or coal, petroleum, so if you compare these resources, so when you look at the availability of air, you feel that there is so much of air around us. So why do we really need to manage air? Because already plenty of it is available. Now, if you talk about coal or petroleum, now do you know how coal is formed, how petroleum is formed? Now, it is actually a very time consuming process. It takes millions of years for coal or petroleum to form. So now when you are able to prepare something over million of years, so you should not let that exhaust within a couple of years. Now managing the resources is also important so that we can ensure equal distribution of resources to all. Now if you see the resources as we said a lot of resources are limited. 
So now when you have something which is in limited stock, so we need to ensure that everybody gets equal share of it. Otherwise, what will happen? All of it will get consumed by a certain group of people and some other group of people will remain deprived of it. So that way we need to ensure that these resources, especially the ones which are limited, which do not, which cannot be created over and again. So those resources should be distributed equally. Protect the environment because Making use of these resources also harm the environment in a certain way. For example, usage of coal, petroleum, so these kind of things when they are burned, a lot of uh, pollution is also caused to the environment. So we also need to take care that the resources are being used in such a way so that the environment remain protected. So these are some of the reasons because of which we talk about managing the natural resources. Now, if you talk about the types of natural resources, broadly, there are two types. One is renewable resources or inexhaustible. The other one is non-renewable or exhaustible. Now, what is the meaning of renew? Renew means something which can be used over and again. So that is called renewable. So if you are able to use something over and again, that is renewable. That means it is not getting over. It is continuously being I mean, created. So one such example would be uh, air. So you see air is always present around us. So air is something which can be used over and again. We breathe in air, we also breathe out air, we also see air being present around us all the time. So it is inexhaustible. Exhaust means something which gets finished. Exhausted means getting tired, getting finished. So inexhaustible, that something which doesn't get exhausted. So renewable resources are inexhaustible resources and one such example is air. Non-renewable resources, they are just the opposite. These resources, once we have used them, they are gone, they are finished. So they cannot be renewed over and again. One example is coal. So once you burn coal and you utilize the heat energy in some way, so you just lost that amount of coal. So you cannot use it again. So these type of resources are also called exhaustible because they get finished. And moreover, the next stock of coal to get formed, it is going to take millions of years. So it takes millions of years for formation of coal. But to use that coal, you just need a couple of minutes or a couple of hours. So that is, if you see, the stock will get finished or the stock will get over in a period of time. So these are called exhaustible resources. Now in this lesson, we are going to talk only about the exhaustible resources. So this is where we are going to focus in this lesson. So however, let's define both of them. So first was inexhaustible. That means it can be used over and again. And that is why they are called renewable resource or unlimited stock. So the stock is always there. It never gets over. So the, that is why they are called renewable. Example is sunlight, wind, air. So these are all renewable resources. So you always have them around you. So they get produced all the time. On the other hand, exhaustible resources, they cannot be used over and again. And they also have a limited stock. So the chances of them getting over is like more because they take a lot of time to get formed. But in a small amount of time, they get utilized. So examples of these kind of non-renewable resources are coal, petroleum, minerals. As I said, coal, I think all of you are aware of petroleum, anything like petrol, diesel, kerosene, they all are components of petroleum. You talk about minerals. Minerals are substances which are formed naturally inside the earth. So examples of minerals could be the precious stones and gemstones like ruby, diamond, emerald so they are all examples of minerals so one very important application of mineral is that metals are extracted from all these minerals metals like gold silver copper zinc so they all come from minerals so these minerals they are exhaustible because it, they, their formation needs a long period of time. So we should utilize them very judiciously so that before the next lot of exhaustible resources are formed, we should be able to live with the existing stock. 
So why do we have so much of concern with the exhaustible resources? Because see, with the inexhaustible resources, the supply or the stock is never ending. So it is like unlimited stock. So we are not much bothered about it. Even if we are wasting that, so we say that, okay, the stock is unlimited, so we are not going to suffer. However, that approach is also not right, but that is how it is. But when it comes to the exhaustible resources, it is like you have a limited stock. It is just like this jar of chocolates. So you see, the jar is like not even full of chocolate. So this much stock is what you have. So now let us suppose there are two students in the class to eat these chocolates. So obviously, even though it is half a jar of chocolates, but still for two students, they are like quite enough. Now let us suppose they start eating one or two chocolates. So the amount starts decreasing. Now, if the number of students suddenly increases, now instead of two, let us say now you have some 10 students feeding on the same uh, jar, which is half full of chocolates. So what will happen? The number of chocolates inside the jar will reduce suddenly and it will reduce a lot because now more people are there to consume the chocolates. So what, what's going to happen now? So now if you look at the jar, the number of chocolates which are left is like very, very less. That's because all of them have got consumed and you cannot refill the jar because it is exhaustible resource. So you do not have a supply of chocolates all the time. So your next supply will come maybe after 10 years or so. So you just can't fill the box again. Now what will happen if two more students come now? So now if the number of students coming in still now is increasing, what's going to happen? There are no more chocolates left over for them to eat. So in this case, what happened was you had a limited stock. You had a limited number of chocolates. Those who came initially, they had all of them. And those who came a little late, there was nothing left for them. So what was wrong in this case? So firstly, you had a limited stock. So that was one thing, but you can't do anything about that because if the production of that particular resource takes so much of time and you cannot artificially produce it, so you absolutely do not have any control on the amount. You just know that, okay, this much is the stock. So now with that stock, the thing which went wrong in this scenario was that initially those who came, they ate it all. So there was no equal distribution of the chocolates. There was unequal or unfair distribution of the chocolates. And that is why those who came in earlier, they had enough chocolates. And those who came late, there was nothing left for them. And this is the main concern with exhaustible resources. So when you talk about exhaustible resources like coal or petroleum, now they have been formed as a result of millions of years. Now when they are there, we often see that the present generation people, they try to make excessive use or unnecessary use of uh, these kind of resources like coal and petroleum, which is absolutely wrong because the future generations, we are not leaving these resources for the future generation. So when the future generation come in, there it, it might be possible that there is no coal, there is no petroleum left. And by now, we all know how important coal and petroleum is, how crucial role they play in our day to day life. So that is why it is very important that we use the exhaustible resources very, very judiciously. So when we talk about the exhaustible resources, the first resource that strikes our mind are the fossil fuels. So what are fossil fuels? These are fuels which are formed by natural processes like decomposition of dead plants and animals. So anything which is formed from dead plants and animals, they are called fossils. And since they act as fuels, they are called fossil fuels. So examples of fossil fuel are coal, petroleum, natural gas. So these are all examples of fossil fuel because all of them are formed from dead animals or plants. So if you talk about coal, it is formed from dead plants. Talk about petroleum. It is also formed from uh, dead animals which were once living in the sea. So anything which is formed from dead living organisms, they are called fossil fuels. So in this lesson, we will talk about how coal was formed, how petroleum was formed and how, what are the components present inside coal or petroleum. So we will talk in detail about them. 
Now, what is the importance of fossil fuels? Why are they so important? Firstly, because they are important sources of energy. Now, if you talk about any fossil fuel, you talk about coal, you burn coal, you get a lot of energy, you get a lot of heat energy, you get a lot of light energy. And this energy is so much that it is actually used to produce electricity. You talk about petrol or diesel, they also act as good sources of energy. Domestic purposes, for example, for cooking, we make use of the cylinders which contain LPG. So the LPG is nothing but it is a, pro it is a product for, uh, obtained from petroleum. Even natural gas, which is available through the gas pipelines. So that is also used for domestic cooking purposes. In fact, coal is also used in a lot of rural areas. Thermal power plant where uh, the heat energy from these fossil fuels are used to generate electricity. So that is the purpose of setting up a thermal power plant. Now the question is how were these fossil fuels formed because I said they were formed from dead plants and animals but how? So these fossil fuels were formed during the Carboniferous period which was a long time ago around 350 million years ago. So can you just imagine how past we are talking about. So millions and millions of years ago during the Carboniferous period. Why was that called Carboniferous period? Because of the role of carbon. So carbon was present in everything. So these fossil fuels were formed. What happened during that time was a lot of trees, plants, organisms, they started dying. So when they died, they went to the bottom of the oceans. Now during those period, a huge portion of the earth was covered by water. Now most of these dead plants or animal remains, they went to the bottom of the ocean. Over a period of time, they formed a layer of spongy material called peat. Because as they went to the bottom, a lot of other things like sand, mud, clay, stones, rocks, they started getting deposited over the dead remains. So after again a couple of years what happened was those dead trees or plants remains they formed a layer called peat and this peat gradually as it got covered with more and more rocks, stones, sand and clay it got squeezed. It is something like you leave uh, say you leave something on a table, you leave a book on the table and on top of the book you keep a lot of stuffs. Now as you keep increasing those stuffs, the book tend to get squeezed. So the same thing happened here. So the peat got squeezed because, squeezed because a lot of other stuffs were actually coming upon it. So gradually because when it got squeezed it started releasing water like how it happens with a sponge. So if you squeeze the sponge, the water goes out. So here also the same thing happened. The water started getting released. And that is how under the influence of high temperature, high pressure. So these dead remains of plants and animals formed coal, petroleum and natural gas. Coal was primarily formed from the remains of dead plants and petroleum was formed from dead remains of animals. So, but this is how it happened and as you can see this transformation of dead plants or animals into coal or petroleum did not happen overnight. So, it took millions of years to for this transformation to take place. So, that's why we always say that these are exhaustible resources because it, the formation has actually taken these many years. So, if we exhaust them so soon, then it will become difficult to form them again. However, even though the fossil fuels are a great source of energy, but there are certain disadvantages associated with them. One is air pollution. Burning of fossil fuels cause a lot of pollution. In fact, it releases a lot of harmful gases like carbon monoxide. Not only pollution, it also results in a lot of harmful substances which are produced during burning of fossil fuels. They remain in the atmosphere and they combine with the normal rain and results in acid rain. So these acid rain contains several acidic oxides. Now this acid rain contains a lot of acidic oxides like carbon oxides, nitrogen and sulfur dioxides and these oxides they actually have a lot of adverse effects not only on uh, the living organisms but 
on a lot of other things like monuments. So one such classic example of uh, adverse effect of acid rain is the Taj Mahal. So if you look at the shine of the Taj Mahal, it has reduced a lot over the past couple of years and that has happened due to acid rain. Greenhouse effect. So what, what happens in a greenhouse effect? So they are also because the amount of the gases which are greenhouse gases when the amount of those gases like methane and carbon dioxide so they are basically the greenhouse gases carbon dioxide and methane now when these gases they increase a lot in the atmosphere what happens is they tend to absorb a lot of heat and therefore overall there is global warming so greenhouse effect over a period of time results in global warming that is the overall temperature of the earth increases now we we will learn about greenhouse effect in other topics so here i will not get into the detail of this but fossil when we burn fossil fuels more and more carbon dioxide is added up to the atmosphere so we are basically increasing the amount of greenhouse gases so that's how we are also contributing to the greenhouse effect now these are some of the very major disadvantages associated with the use of fossil fuels and therefore we should be very much conscious about uh, uh, how we use fossil fuels now there are quite a reasons attached to it first of all first of all these are exhaustible resources i mean if we use them all at once nothing will be left for the immediate future generations because fossil fuels cannot be formed over a period of 100 or 200 years they will again need some millions of years so that means the future generations will not have any more fossil fuels so that is one reason second thing is a lot of uh, pollution also happens due to the use of fossil fuels so that means also to protect our environment to keep our environment clean we should try to use fossil fuels judiciously so based on whatever we have discussed so far about fossil fuels, what do we conclude? We conclude that uh, resources like coal and petroleum should be used judiciously so that they are left for our future generation. It is very similar to the example of the jar of chocolates. So if the present generation, that is those students who are coming early, if they eat all the chocolates, then what will happen? Nothing will be left for the students who will come a little later. So similarly, the present generation, if they use all the coal and petroleum, nothing will be ne left for the next generation. So children, I hope you found the video useful. If you have a feedback or a request which you want to make, please do share that in the comment section. We would be more than happy to hear from you. And I will meet you all very soon with a new video with a new topic. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.